How's it going everyone? My name is Arnold and if it is your first time on this channel, it is amazing meeting you, you beautiful, sexy. This is the second part of a three-part series on the ultimate guide on how to get into your top school, Ivy League, elite college, whatever you call it. And in this episode, we're going to focus on your extracurriculars and your essays. I don't know why I decided to grab that. I actually just put a hoodie on from the last video to make it seem like I'm recording on different days. Why am I exposing myself like that? Now before we get started, please watch the last video as that focuses more on test score, GPA, transcript, all that, and I tell you my scores just so that you have the full package of information. Once again, if you enjoy this content, please like, comment, subscribe, and click on the bell notification icon because it truly helps out the channel with growth. What am I doing with all these weird gestures today? And remember to breathe and relax because everything will be alright. Now I realized in the last video I rambled a lot, so please excuse me for that, but I'm gonna to try to keep this simple and informative. Watch me fail doing that. All right, for extracurriculars, it is truly important to start early. The earlier, the better. Top colleges place huge importance on you having meaningful activities that you have been doing consistently and developing over a long period of time because they can definitely see through you just wanting to randomly decide for student council your senior year just to have something on your activity section. The longer, the better. So if you can do something for all four years, that is great, but I know that I can take time to find meaningful interests. And don't worry, some of my most meaningful activities were only developed towards the last two years of my high school career. This leads to the second one. Although people advise against this, I think that you should just be involved as much as you can, especially early on. I think it's fine to overcommit because afterwards, you have the options of many different activities that you can sculpt and position and market yourself better. It's better to do a lot and then shave off some activities when you are submitting your application than to have a little bit of things and try to struggle to cram activities towards the end of your last two years, if that makes sense. Why am I talking so much? Find something you like. This can literally, literally be anything and then try to take the next step given the resources that are available to you. If you're from an area where you can't do a bunch of crazy things like go on world tours or anything, don't worry. Once again, everything is relative to the context of your school. Do what you can in your school and do it best. Do what you can in your school and given the context of your environment. Now commitment is truly important, but you also want to be able to have tangible achievements and awards to actually show your qualifications in these activities. If you think about it, you can sugarcoat your application and colleges won't really know whether or not an activity is true or not. But having actual tangible proof and achievements shows colleges that you are verifying this activity and you're actually giving a manifestation of the work you've done for that activity. You just need to be creative and don't be afraid to embellish a little bit. And once again, when applying, you can still convey your achievements even if they are non-tangible. Try to get leadership positions. More importantly, just be true and genuine to yourself. Do you actually enjoy doing this activity? Does this actually mean a lot to you? If it does, then that's great. <clears throat> this goes with summers as well. If you can, maybe try to find a job, intern, do something. Uh, just try to be productive over summer, even if it's something for self-help and self-health. Just try to be productive and take advantage of all the time that you can during high school. Bonus tip, make sure you're always writing down all of your achievements, awards, your activities. Keep a resume throughout all four years. And if it's your junior or senior year when you're applying, just write down every single thing that you've done that you can possibly imagine. Now, whether this is volunteer at the soup kitchen, mock trial, that one time you helped Aunt Betsy clean out the gutters, everything counts. Now I want to move to a discussion of spiky versus rounded. I'm pretty good with all the gestures today, huh? A spiky applicant is an applicant that focuses specifically on one or maybe two things and that they excel very, very well in those one or two things. And a rounded applicant is somebody who has a more diverse array and whose interests are more broad and isn't necessarily an expert in one specific thing. People always ask about this, but the truth is I have many, many friends at Yale and Harvard and Stanford who got in both as spiky and rounded. The honest truth is, if you have one or two things that you're passionate and interested about, that helps out colleges in the sense that it is easy and clear to see how you would fit to their student body because they wanna create a student body that is diverse. But at the same time, if you are truly passionate about several different fields, I'm sure that you can find a way to actually connect these things under a common theme. It's all about in the way you tell your story and how your passions link and interconnect. Because let's be honest, no matter how good you are in a specific field, a lot of college students change change their minds once they enter college. And admissions officers are aware of this. Once again, great test scores and grades just qualify you for the most part, but activities and essays are truly important in conveying your story and showing who you are as an actual human being with interests and passions and a drive to help other people to be selfless. And you really wanna make sure that you have those specific qualities that define you and you wanna be able to convey those in your application pretty well. Let me analyze some examples of my extracurriculars and passions and what I did to get into college. Let's move to the laptop. 
One of the main activities I ranked highly on my common app was the Central Players Drama Club at my school. As you can see, even though it was at the last two years of my school, it was a very important theater and drama activity that I was heavily involved with. I was involved as a lead actor and part of the main cast, and I spent and invested a lot of hours in this activity every week. As you can see, I try to put descriptive and tangible achievements and things that I did, such as receiving positive reviews from people who came to the shows, how I was offered an acting internship, how I was awarded most congenial, and how I was able to gather multiple people to help sponsor and promote these plays. Another important activity that I was involved with was student government and politics. In the ninth grade, I was merely a member, but then I showed progression and improved to the student representative for both the 11th and 12th grade. I noted how I was the first junior elected by over 1,000 kids, I created the peer mediation program, established a rotary grant for the late bus system, revised the district improvement plan, and was also awarded the Spirit Award in my city for this. Another important thing I did was that even throughout all this, I had a job that I had to work that took up a lot of time in order to help my family and myself financially. So throughout all of this, I was able to show my passion for theater and political science and how everything related to each other to convey my story. You need to create a story. What is the story that you want to tell the admissions office? Right now, I am currently a political science and theater and performance studies double major. And the funny thing is I applied as a mathematics and physics and English language and literature double major. But the funniest thing is my extracurricular has greatly resembled my current major choices right now. Do things of value and of meaning to you and something that can help other people and help you in the long run. Now, if you want to see a full PDF, just email me down below at this email. I think I'll put it here, but just email me asking for a PDF of my common app of my activities and essays, and I'll be more than glad to send it to you. So thank you so much. Yeah. All right, now for essays, you should most definitely, definitely, definitely start as early as you can as well. I think one of the most important things about the college process in general is starting early, but don't worry, even if you're in your junior or senior year, you can still use these tips in a rushed manner. All I'm saying is that the earlier you start, the better you are positioning yourself to apply for colleges and you won't have to stress as much. But it's most definitely possible cramming uh, junior and senior year. Your main common app essay should be able to tie everything together and showcase who you are as a person. There are many specific guides on YouTube on how to craft the perfect essay, so I'm not even going to try to pretend like I'm a professional in that field. But if you have supplemental essays, it's good to include different aspects of you and different hobbies and interests and funny stories that convey your personality. But at the end of the day, every... <clears throat> <clears throat> oh my god. But at the end of the day, everything should sort of link together and connect to convey who you are as a person. Keep a notepad or notebook or use your iPhone or phone and whenever you have an idea or inspiration or even a thought of something to write about, just write it down, type it down, and maybe you can find some common themes there. This could be while you're walking, showering, waking up from a dream, this was the method I used to find my topic for my essay. If you want a video of me reading my actual essays, let me know. But for now, in honor of this video, I will be reading some of my Yale songs. Supplements. Yale's blah blah blah. What person, past or present, would you invite to speak? What question would you ask? Lynn Manuel Miranda. How does one perfect the craft of performance and writing? You are teaching a Yale course. What is it called? <laughs> How to Read and Write Good, an English Guide, Semester 1, Irony. Most first year Yale students, blah blah blah, what would you contribute to the dynamic of your suite? Now besides my self-deprecating humor and optimistically realistic views on the world to enhance camaraderie, I'd encourage everyone to play soccer or simply work out. Health is number one. Oh, shit. Ooh. That gave me a heart attack, but I'm still checking myself out. I'm gonna end the video with this discussion. You might think that your specific circumstances will make it very hard for you to get into a top school. Oh, another Asian with a 1600. Charlie, put them in with the rest. All jokes aside, I promise you that this is not the case, as you can really, really distinguish yourself with your personality in your extracurriculars and essays, and even in your motivations on why you're studying a specific field. We'll take this as an example. Real talk, there are a solid amount of Asian American males who are applying to be a CS major. But once again, context is key. You're not being compared to all Asian American applicants in your country or out of your country or even in your state sometimes. You're being viewed as who you are as an applicant and mainly compared through your school or school district. So if there is another Asian majoring in CS, then show why your interest in CS is different. Why is there a story behind that that distinguishes yourself? Convey your unique motivations in your essays. Hopefully you develop good relationships with your teachers as well so they can speak about those motivations and the differences that you bring to the table. You just need to create a narrative and to position yourself in a unique manner given the context of your environment and upbringing. Do what you can control. For example, my younger brother who's Asian American wants to apply to MIT as a computer science major. When 
one unique thing that he is doing is that he is starting a coding club and a math and science club at his school and also volunteering and working on programs to help younger kids learn about coding. Furthermore, he's still working on these projects even during COVID-19. Another thing he does is that he's a sound designer, light designer, and an actor for my school's theater club. So even though those two passions are different, it shows how you can interconnect those two. Oh, it shows how you can interconnect those distinct passions and unify them with a common theme. So now he has a very unique background and motivation as to why he wants to major in computer science. Luckily at Yale, for example, we have a major called computing and the arts. You see what I mean? Use your situation to your advantage and you have to be creative with this. And I want to clarify this. Don't do things that are wasting your time. Just do things that you genuinely think are making you happy and things that are productive and things that will help out your application. Overall, just do things that you love. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. This is the second part. If you didn't watch the first part, it is in the link over here probably. I'm gonna have a final last third part coming out soon as well. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and click on the bell notification icon because I'm on a Wednesday and Friday 3 p.m. schedule and it helps out my channel a lot. And I love your comments. I love engaging with you. It honestly makes my day. And just thank you so much. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay loved, and I'll see you in the next video.